It was reported on Monday that the New York Mets could submit the biggest offer for Shohei Otani in free agency. What would that mean for this franchise moving forward? We'll discuss that on today's edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com. John Harper of SNY today reported that the New York Mets would submit the biggest offer to show Otani if he decides to come to the East Coast. There's been a lot of speculation that Otani would like to stay out West, but if he decides to come East, according to Harper and the baseball people he has spoken to, there's no reason why Steve Cohen wouldn't open up that big, big pocketbook and give Otani the biggest deal he's going to find anywhere. Now, Otani wants to win. And so you're going to need Billy Epler, who did convince Shoei Otani to sign with the Angels in the first place, which who knows how Otani feels about Billy Epler now, considering how his Angels tenure went. But you're going to need to convince him that the Mets are the place where he can win. and. You're also going to obviously have to give him that very convincing offer. And maybe as much as everyone could say it's all about winning, you throw enough dollars in front of him, it might be hard to pass up. Here's what the quote said in John Harper's article for SNY. It says, quote, "Uh, I'd have to believe their thinking changes if Otani tells him that he'd come to New York, said a rival team executive. He'd make their offense above average with the potential to be better than that if their young guys produce. Then you go spend on pitching, sign a starter, and trade some prospect capital for another, then beef up to bull- the bullpen, and you've got a legit contender. It all sounds great, but before we get into what it looks like next year, if the Mets were to pull off what feels like the impossible and actually land the greatest free agent ever, I mean, even with the Tommy John surgery, the guy been the best hitter in baseball this year. He would be the best DH, I think, moving forward, regardless of ever if he ever pitches again. So there's that side of it, and then there's still the possibility that you do get that two-way player who has been able to achieve something that no one else has in baseball history. So before we get into what that looks like on the field, I want to compare this situation to the one that happened in the other borough a century ago with Babe Ruth because everyone always links these two guys. The name Shohei Otani is always followed by Babe Ruth, you know, the next Babe Ruth. That was how he was billed coming in because Babe Ruth is the only guy who's ever been able to pitch at an elite level and hit an elite level in the majors until Otani did it. And Otani is the first one to really do it at the same time because Babe Ruth never really did what Otani has just completed over the past three years. But that's not the comp I'm trying to make here, the pitching and hitting element of Babe Ruth. To me, it's more what happened when Babe Ruth came to the Yankees because we're going way back in the history books, but the New York Yankees never won a pennant before Babe Ruth got there. They won one in his second season, first of three in a row, won their first World Series in 1923. He came to the Yankees in 1920. They won four World Series with Ruth, uh, seven pennants, he won seven World Series altogether, uh, you know, three with the Red Sox, four with the Yankees, and he hit 659 home runs in 15 seasons with the New York Yankees. Babe Ruth changed the course of history for the Yankees franchise. Not to say that they wouldn't have still become what they eventually did, you know, the best winner in this sport, but 
it certainly was that first piece of history with the curse of the Bambino against their chief rival in the Red Sox and everything else that followed from it. That was a significant moment in franchise history that still 100 years later probably hasn't been matched. Shohei Otani comes to the New York Mets. Could it be that type of a move? Could it be that type of a franchise alterer? Would it just be because of Otani or would it be the groundswell of everything else building around it, right? Same thing with the Yankees back then. There was a lot of other great players that ended up joining Ruth, Gehrig, and you know beyond that, DiMaggio, Mantle, all, all those great players that eventually would suit up in pinstripes and make them the 20-plus you know, time champions that they are. But it started with Ruth. The Mets are sitting with this owner that you would imagine is going to figure this thing out at some point, right? When you have the financial wherewithal, the desire to win that he does, when you're empowering smart people to make your baseball decisions as David Stearns now becomes the president. With all these resources, eventually the Mets are going to get it right. At least that's what I believe. If you plug Otani into it, though, that could be the catalyst, the spark plug that sets the whole franchise on fire, that really gets you moving in the right direction. Because Shoei Otani is the type of player that can carry a team. We've, maybe not to the playoffs by himself, but what would the Angels have been this year without him? They might be right there with the Oakland Athletics. <laughs> and the Chicago White Sox and the Kansas City Royals, with how some of the other guys on that team have played. Shohei Otani is part of a team that has a Francisco Lindor, that has Brandon Nimmo, that has Pete Alonso, that has Kodai Sanga in the rotation. Over the next couple of years, with a, a budding farm system that will continue to populate spots in that lineup and, and make the team better and better over time, the Mets could become that juggernaut. It could be that he is that one piece that you need to add, or maybe it's a different free agent down the line. But I'll tell you what, just the thought of Shoei Otani, the marketing, the sensation that it would be, the way it would just completely change the focal point of the franchise on that one guy and how it could have a butterfly effect on everything else. Even with the Tommy John surgery that he's going under right now, I can understand why Steve Cohen gives him the blank check. I really could. And then the question becomes, all right, what would that then look like next season? And that's where we're going to get to next. You know, if the Mets were to give Shohei Otani $500, $600 million, I have no idea what that contract looks like, especially after, uh, you know, this, this Tommy John situation. I don't know how that impacts it. But if they are the team that lands this guy, how would that impact them in 2024 in particular? Because he's not going to pitch next year. And that's still what the Mets need the most help with. So how would all of that shake out and discuss it next? Before we do, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Sales. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and the seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. This is called Deep Sales, and LinkedIn has built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a free 60-day trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. The New York Mets put the Miami Marlins at 6.40 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. Catch every pitch in the Mets hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Mets. Now, if the New York Mets were to pull off the impossible or the improbable sign show Otani, what would that mean for them in 2024? Well, it would mean they still need a lot of help in that starting rotation if they wanted to actually contend. 
But in some ways, if you could get Otani to buy into the complete vision of the franchise, which is not just to say, hey, you're going to be a winner in year one. It's about being a perennial contender. And you can get him to buy into what you have in store with some of the prospects. I don't think you would have to really deviate from your plan too much. If you could sign Shohei Otani and Yoshinobu Yamamoto and then just add some veterans around the edges, you would contend in 2024, but 2025 would probably be your real target window. It would still be that season where maybe you get Otani back in the rotation. All of a sudden it's Senga Yamamoto Otani and you're like Team Japan out there. And you have this crazy one, two, three punch. If all are able to stay healthy, you know, that's a team that could really make noise. It could make noise for a long time if all those guys are under contract. Now, 2024 in particular, you know, I think there's in some ways a possibility where the Otani surgery and him not being able to pitch. It allows you to continue what I think is the best thing for this franchise. I think the Mets should try to win next year, but I don't think that they should go completely all in to be a betting favorite to win the World Series. I think they should leave room for opportunities for their youth. We're going to talk in the next segment about this game tonight against the Marlins. You know, Jose Budo pitched really well. Not to say that you're going to you know, completely open the door for him to be in the starting rotation, but the Mets have some arms now with the prospects in double a with Mike Vassell and triple a with a guy like Jose Budo, who's shown some stuff here. You know, the Mets have some arms that you want to see if you can get some cost controlled starters in that rotation. You don't want to just go into free agency and sign three starting pitchers and try to win. I mean, maybe you do if you sign Otani, I don't know, but I, I think there is a world where you can continue on your timeline and sign Shoei Otani is, is what I'm getting at here. And you just look at what the lineup would look like. And all of a sudden, I think the Mets could be in a position where you see what you know part of the season you get Otani back. You know, Bryce Harper got Tommy John surgery this year in, in November or last year in November. It was back in the lineup early May. You know, Otani is getting it now. There's every chance that he could be ready to DH all season if he is. I mean, your lineup with Brandon Nemo, Francisco Lindor, Shoei Otani, Pete Alonso, Jeff McNeil, Francisco Alvarez, Ronnie Mauricio, Brett Beatty, and Starling Marte, pretty damn good one through nine. You always can bring back a guy like DJ Stewart to give you some insurance on a guy like Marte, who is a big question mark going into next year. Not to mention, at some point next season, you could see Luis and Helicuna, and he could be your starting second baseman, and Mauricio could be moved to third. If Brett Beatty still hasn't figured it out, there's a lot of things that could happen. There's a lot of talent that could come up. Drew Gilbert could be up and being your, your starting center fielder or be moved over to left, depending on what you want to do with him and Nimmo. There's a lot of talent that could be on this roster. And what Shohei Otani would do is it would take this revolving door you've had at DH and it would give you a clear answer. Here's your DH for the next decade. And you're going to have one of, if not the best hitter in baseball for the next decade. Now, in some ways, it also would make Pete Alonso a little more expendable because, you know, the prospect of later in his career shifting him to DH, that would go out the window. Is he going to play first base well into his 30s? I don't know. But the bottom line here is Shohei Otani is arguably the best hitter on the planet. Maybe Aaron Judge is the only one who can compete with him on that level. I guess this season, Corey Seager has been there as well. But you know, Otani is one of one and that's not even getting into the entire business aspect of what he do for your franchise. So look, it's September in a lost season. This is the time where you dream about this stuff. When a report comes out that the Mets could have the biggest offer and we know how free agency works. A lot of times the biggest offer gets the job done. It's fun to dream about the possibilities with that said, there's, you know, 29 other teams that you would think would want to be in on Otani. Obviously, small market teams aren't going to stand a chance, but you know, there's going to be a list of probably 10 teams that are seriously trying to get their foot in the door and make a pitch. Um, and, and so the, the competition is going to be fierce to actually land them. I still think it's a lot of fun to think about, though. So um, we'll just see what happens. We'll see 
if uh, the Mets can actually pull it off. And if they do, it, how everything looks next season beyond really doesn't matter because you're getting a talent that is just so superior to anything else that you're ever going to find in free agency. I mean, yeah, you might have a chance the following year at Juan Soto. Juan Soto is great. And who knows? Maybe the next 10 years of Juan Soto offensively is better than the next 10 years of Shohei Otani. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, though. I think there's a lot of people who take Otani when it comes to just the bat. And then the fact that there's still that chance that he's going to come back and pitch again, um, whether that's a guy that can be an ace, whether that's a guy who can be the best hitter in baseball and a middle of the rotation arm for you, which is still incredibly value valuable or um you know if maybe the future of Shoyotani is becoming a closer um or a reliever I, I don't know I don't know what that's going to look like but again what he would mean to your franchise I I feel like it's one of those pursuits that a guy like Steve Cohen has to at least dip his toes into the water and try to see what could happen because you know, it could be something like Babe Ruth to the Yankees a hundred years ago, um, where Shohei Otani comes over and wins four World Series with the New York Mets, and the New York Mets become a perennial contender for decades and decades on decades because of the precedent that started with the Otani acquisition. So we'll see. Uh, fun stuff to think about, though. The Mets, though, uh, they beat the Marlins on Monday night. I'm going to discuss that next before we do. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form, and one of their board-certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then, they send your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies, where your Jace order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. And not only this, you can send your physician a message for answers to treatment-related questions anytime. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using the code LOCKEDON at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's Jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com. The New York Mets play the Miami Marlins at 6.40 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday night. Catch every pitch of the Mets' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Mets. The Miami Marlins scored 36 runs against the Atlanta Braves over the weekend. They face off against the New York Mets. They put up a run because Jose Budo is awesome. Uh, It's one of those things where a team was just red hot and you just sort of forecast it right that they're going to come back down to earth and the new york mets are going to be the team that does it to them because baseball is funny that way where a team that's after this win still 10 games under 500 uh gets a victory on the marlins where the braves who are the best team in baseball this year got swept that's just how baseball works but seriously jose budo is throwing the ball ridiculously well and making a case for himself to be a, a consideration for the rotation next year. One thing is damn sure he's not going to be taken off the 40 man roster. That that that's gone. That's out the window. He has shown too much. Even if he gets lit up in his next two starts to close out the year, doesn't matter. Jose Budo is going to be on the 40 next year. And I mean, here he is in this start gives up four hits. Only one walk allowed six strikeouts gets through six innings with 95 pitches. On the season now, he's at 32 innings pitched. He's got a 3.09 ERA with the New York Mets. And you look at his last three starts, six and a third against Washington, two earned runs, five innings against Arizona, seven strikeouts. Hit six strikeouts, by the way, in that start against Washington. And then this one, six innings pitched, six strikeouts, one earned run. I mean, he has really just gone out and been great. And it's... Uh, a fastball changeup combo primarily mixing the slider a bunch tonight actually got decent amount of whiffs on the pitch, 44% whiff percentage, but you know, it, it's really just working fastball changeup and, you know, inducing soft contact. So really impressive to sort of 
see him continue to develop and a guy that struggled so much in triple a this year really been awesome with the new york mets so I'm, I'm excited to watch him pitch the next two times and see if he closes out this season strong because the more you get glimpses of this and you know even seeing a guy like tyler mcgill throw the ball well down the stretch and seeing david peterson at least be much better than he was you, know, you can start to make the case that all right build out your rotation in a year where you're not trying to potentially go in as a world series favorite 2024, you know, maybe it is just get one or two starters in free agency and understand that there's some depth here where if you go into spring training and it's an open competition between David Peterson and Joey Lucchese and Tyler McGill and Jose Budo and Mike Vassell, you might find a pretty good answer out of that conversation. So uh definitely the, the best takeaway from this game Mets offense put up eight hits but just two runs it was a Jeff McNeil home run that ended up being the difference in the game his 10th of the year the Mets scored another run in the fifth inning as it was Ronnie Mauricio who got a hit he then stole second base his sixth stolen base of the season guy might get the 10 <laughs> in very limited playing time so he's been really impressive uh, and Mark Vientos continues to improve a little bit and, and show that there is something in that bat. He drove in Mauricio with a knock. So good to see the Mets offense do just enough to support a great pitching performance by Jose Budo. It'll be fun to see if the Mets can win this series. The fact now that there's at least going to be a rubber match game with Kodai Sang on the mound on Wednesday, it's going to be fun. So uh, I am enjoying the Mets in this spoiler roll down the stretch where you're not just spoiling things for the Reds or the Diamondbacks teams that you really don't care about. It's spoiling some stuff for teams in your division who there's that built-in rivalry with. Um, one last note for the show today. Edwin Diaz will not pitch again this season. Uh, they say it's just not worth risking having him out there, which makes sense. You know, I made the argument that if there was no injury risk, why not pitch him? You know, it, It'd be okay to give him that carrot for working as hard as he did to rehab and get himself in a position to join the team at this stage of the season. If the Mets were in a playoff chase, Edwin Diaz is probably out there. But what Jeremy Hefner said was it's not worth the risk, and it's not even the pitching that is the risk at this point. It's, you know, after the game, if you notch a save, you might want to celebrate with your teammates. Too soon on that one? Um, no, it's about fielding his position though. That, that's what they said. And it makes complete sense. I mean, you, know, you don't want Edwin Diaz on a still little bit shaky knee to have to run off the mound to field a bunt. And all of a sudden a disaster happens. Makes sense. Keep him in a controlled environment of bullpens where there's not live batters and that uncertainty out there. Let him have a full off season to continue to, uh, not at that point rehab, but you know, go through his typical off season training get himself to 100%, and you would imagine the best closer in baseball will be fully available throughout the 2024 season, which right there, that alone is a massive upgrade for the New York Mets if you're really thinking about what the team's going to look like next season. Regardless, so that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets. For all you everydayers on tomorrow's show, we'll discuss Starling Marte and the question mark that he presents the Mets moving forward, and if DJ Stewart can be the answer to that question mark uh, so we'll go through all of that. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. If you want to catch every pitch in the Mets hometown broadcast tonight, you can do so with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Mets.